Hey, everybody, it's the coach. Welcome to the special Saturday edition of the NFL on EA Sports. Up next, we've got a good one on tap between the visiting Houston Texans and the Chicago Bears. With that, let's get out to venerable Soldier Field in Chicago. Standing by with the call, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Thank you, Coach. Soldier Field opened back in 1924 with the Bears becoming tenants in 71. And what a home field advantage it has become here in Chicago. This was the scene a moment ago as the Bears emerged from their tunnel. Ready for football are they and ready for football are we as the Bears get set to match up with the Houston Texans. Brandon Gordon and Charles Davis on hand. And this is a game where the defenses, they need to be on their toes because you've got quarterbacks here, yes, that can throw the football, but they can also run it very well, too. Mobile quarterbacks. Remember, for the longest time, they used to tell the quarterbacks, stay in the pocket. We don't want you outside of it at all. Nowadays, that mobility, truly an asset, and people are game planning for it. As a scout told me recently, we are actually working with what the colleges are giving us nowadays. So here's Kaimi Fairbairn to do the honors. And off we go from Soldier Field. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. So here are the Bears now for their opening drive. As we get a peek at the former number two overall pick, Mitchell Trubisky. Trubisky on first down, and this is caught. It's Jimmy Graham, and he'll be corralled right around the 34. It's a pickup of 10 and a Bears first down. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Here's the first carry for Tariq Cohen. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Next to receivers, they'll spread the defense out, and they were able to come through with a slashing run. But to that point, it's going to be interesting to see the personnel chess match as this one progresses. Yeah, you're exactly right. Can they continue to create running lanes out of passing sets? And if so, it's going to be a long day for the defense. From the 41, Trubisky, and Graham's got it, complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 14 yards into Chicago, first down. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages, when they find those levels where they can hit you with it. Sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. First down, a run with Cohen. Room here to run. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. A gain there of 12 yards and a first down for the Bears. Well, one unit I know you want to watch is that offensive line. If they keep clearing holes like that, it could be a long night defensively. No doubt about it, because when they are in sync, as we're seeing so far, when that continuity is there, and you can see that they're playing off of each other while controlling the defensive front linebackers, you're exactly right. It could be a very long night for the defense because someone's going to run for some big yardage. On first down, they go right back to Cohen. And if there was a lane there, it closed up quickly as he stopped for no gain. Second down. And this offense often hinges on one of the best tight ends in the league, and that's Jimmy Graham. I think he made up for lost time when he got to the NFL because in college, he was mainly a basketball player, a defender who couldn't score. Now he's flipped it around in the NFL. Every time he touches the ball, he's a threat to score. So after the run for no gain, here's second and 10. Watch the run, watch the run. 
They'll run on second down with Cohen. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. It'll be a loss of a yard, and they'll be facing a third and 12. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case, and that play got bottled up. The Texans here on third down, putting an extra defender in the secondary. From the gun, it's Trubisky. They'll buy some time right. He may try and run for this. And he'll be stopped short of the first down as they rally to tackle him at about the 28. Pretty solid gain of seven yards that time as he scrambled, but now they face a fourth down. Well, partner, nothing comes open here, so he decides to escape out of there, and he doesn't pick up a first down, but he does gain additional yardage to set up a possible field goal attempt if they decide to go that route. Now for the field goal try, here's Eddie Pinheiro. From the right hash, this from 45 yards away. And his kick is absolutely perfect. And it's 3-0. The Bears hit the scoreboard first. Able to move the ball on that drive. Yes, just three points, but four first downs were in there. Yeah, and you can look at it and feel pretty good about the whole thing and think, okay, this should continue throughout this ball game. On the flip side, if you're a defender, it's almost like whew, we only gave up three. They moved the ball on us pretty well. After the field goal, on to kick it away is Pinheiro. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. So here come the Texans now for their first drive. Leading him out is their quarterback, the former 12th overall pick. Some refer to him as the natural, Deshaun Watson. Watson will bring up the Texans here, first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. They'll run for the first time with Johnson. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. The first carry now, this is Johnson. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. That's good for a Texan first down, a 12-yard pickup. They went counter there offensively, and a couple of the defenders were on skates for a second. They certainly were, and you know what offensive linemen love about the counters and the misdirections? Sometimes you don't even have to block the defender. He can run himself out of the play if he doesn't read his keys properly. Now on the heels of that run by Johnson, here's another first and 10. Out of the gun, Watson. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. Will Fuller was the intended target, but it'll be second down. And let's look here at the Houston offense. So let's all work together on this one because it's natural to just watch the football. But I want all of us to watch the center of this offensive line, the center and the two guards. They've got to be able to control the point of attack, and they didn't do such a good job on that last play. Plenty of opportunities to redeem themselves. They'll have to take advantage of that and start to make progress. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. Now a play fake, and it's Watson. 
And now he'll tuck it and run. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 44-yard line. Well, he did a nice job keeping his eyes downfield, waiting for someone to get open. But once the pressure forced his eyes down to see the rush, it was time to make a break for it. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Johnson running right. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. The starting 11 defensively for the Bears. Robert Quinn gets to the quarterback as well as any defensive end in the league. A lot of it goes back to his high school wrestling background. He understands leverage and hands as well as anyone. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and 10. Watson now to throw. Sliding out. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. That's sacked by Khalil Mack. Yeah, and we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway. But when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, Oftentimes, the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. Following the sack, it's now third and long for Watson and the Texans. Third and long, it's Watson. Looking for Cooks, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Kyle Fuller. And they're going to set up shop at the 27-yard line. Well, they didn't exactly show patience there, did they? Just down a score, they come out firing right away and compound things by throwing an interception. They put their defense in a really tough spot. Here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field. They've got a 3-0 lead and the football as they start first and 10. Trubisky brings the Bears up first and 10 at their own 27. After the interception, here's Trubisky. This is caught by Robinson. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Give him nine there on the first down completion. That time they hit him out of the slot on the drag. And that route takes some fortitude from the guy running it because he knows he's going through the briar patch, as I like to call it, right? He's trying to work his way through all that traffic and people want to put a little contact on it. Really well done. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Second and one and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. On first down, it's Cullen. Bradley Roby, the quarterback, there to make the stop. The defensive crew for the Texans. Here's a look. Bernard McKinney is one of the tallest inside linebackers that you'll see in the game, but he has the bulk to go along with it. And I do think that his height is actually an advantage for him. It used to be that you're worried about tall guys inside because they had to fight off low blocks. But I think his ability to see into the offensive backfield, see what's going on and read it, allows him to diagnose plays quicker and get there in a hurry. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. <laughs> Trubisky gives to Cohen. And a good pick up there. He gets about six up to midfield. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. Four. 
And the Texans have an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. They'll try to run for it with Cohen. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going and they're controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, moving that defensive front backwards. But also like what the runner's giving us, too. It appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out here and take off. They'll run on first down. It's Cohen, and that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he can even get started. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. Uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. On second down now, it's Cohen. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. So from second and long, now we go to third and very manageable. Yeah, they love that phrase, don't they? Because as an offensive coordinator, you can keep people a little bit off balance in guessing because you don't have to throw it. You can come back with a strong run game if you want to. And if you're in four down territory, that really opens things up for you. Now it's Trubisky. Open man is Miller. He's got it. 16 yards is the pickup there and a first down for Chicago. All right, let's just go ahead and walk through this one pretty easily, right? Blast off the line of scrimmage. Get downfield to a certain point, usually around 8 to 10 yards. Turn around and make sure the quarterback sees your numbers and set yourself up for the pass. A well-executed curl route by Charles Davis. From the red zone now, here's Trubisky on first down. And he finds his tight end, Graham. And they work this near the five. He'll be stopped at the six. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. <laughs> I got a kick out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size, you can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, Definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. And Miller will pull this one in. He's got it for the Bears' touchdown. It's a six-yard touchdown pass as the Bears push further out in front. And all about timing there on that short slant, Charles. Exactly right. That was timed up so well. The route, the throw, touchdown. Eddie Pinheiro now for the extra point. It's up and good, and that'll increase their lead to 10 zip. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And the end result is a Bears touchdown. Now after the touchdown, here's Pinheiro to kick it off. This is taken at the three. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. 
And now out comes Houston. They look to get something started. They need to down 10 nothing early as they've got it first and 10. Watson will bring up the Texans here, first and 10 at their own 24. They begin the drive with Johnson. In on the stop, the former Georgia Bulldog, Roquan Smith. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here, and what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while, get at least two first downs, give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. From the gun, a run for Johnson. This will go for five up to the 33. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. Watson to throw on third and one. Into the hands of the tight end. This is Jordan Thomas. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. And that one was a lot of fun right there because that was the game within the game. Third and short. Blitz was on. What's the key for the quarterback? Get out of your hands in a hurry. And that was a quick little completion. Got the job done for a first down. A first down carry here for Johnson. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A pickup of 11 and a Texans first down. I have to admit, I'm excited by that play call and the end result because this is a team that's down big early in the first quarter. And a lot of teams will just panic, abandon the playbook, and just start firing the ball all over the place. It's way too early for that. Stick to what works for you. Down double digits, and we talked about their game plan being both running and passing there. You're right. They're sticking to the game plan, getting the ground game going. A lot of football left to be played. So into bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 47. Here's Watson. It's hauled in by Brandon Cooks. That'll be a pickup of 10 as they try to recover from this 10-point deficit. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big-time run, big-time pass. A one-two combination. Look pretty good. How about that? Let's see, if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. On second down, Johnson. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. That's a big loss of three, and it brings up third down. He has elite instincts from his linebacker spot. He's able to diagnose the run and flies in like a missile to stop that one behind the line of scrimmage. A good chance this is four down territory if they're unable to convert. But right now looking at a third and three. A shotgun snap for Watson. He finds his target, Fuller. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears 30. Has a pretty good throw on the curl route there. Third down, and they pick up a first. Defense should be aware for that, right? They should be aware, but it was so hard sometimes. Yeah, it's not easy. Because when they, when they sell that route really well, you think they're going upfield, then they curl back, show their numbers to the quarterback, and complete the play. Watson now, after the pick on the last drive, three for three to start this drive. It's first and 10. Here's Johnson. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. 
All right, quick observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm seeing linebackers playing with their noses close to the line of scrimmage. And my guess is the wheels are turning on that other sideline. As a play caller, you're filing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you can play action them or stick something to them between the second and the third level. And this will probably be the last play of the quarter. Ten nothing the score after one on EA Sports. Second down, it's Johnson. Four yards on the pick up there as they get it back to a more manageable third and seven. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. The Texans on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This is third and seven. From the gun, here's Watson. That's caught. It's Thomas. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Well, this is how you shake the thoughts of that interception on the last drive. You come out and start this one four for four. And watching him throw it around with that type of confidence reminds me of a guy I played with way back when who told me, I don't care if I throw 10 interceptions in a row, I'm going to stay confident and keep flinging it. I'll just figure there's something wrong with the football. So another third down conversion, and now they've got a first and goal. Here's Watson. And it's a touchdown. Deshaun Watson taking it in as they are now on the board here in the first half. Well, this was a pass all the way, but he just kept buying time, didn't he? It was kind of like, wait, wait. Oh, it's open. Time to hot foot it and go. And boy, was he successful. Yeah, didn't go to the outside toward the pylon, just straight ahead, middle third of the field. Shortest distance between two points, straight line. Kaimi Fairbairn on for the extra point. And they're back within a field goal. It's 10 7 now. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And the final act belonged to Deshaun Watson in his touchdown run. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. This is taken at the three. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. Tariq Cohen and the rest of the offense heading back out there. The passing game, they've had more success there than the running game. Maybe something they game plan for. How come they didn't tell us about it? Because they wanted to keep it a secret. <laughs> we did ask, didn't we? But I think what happened in this one is they've realized that they've established the run pretty well, and teams are going to key on that. They thought they could open it up and have success through the air, and that's exactly what's going on. Yeah, they've had success at least so far here in the second quarter. Trubisky brings the Bears up first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. Trubisky will throw. And this is going to be caught, but they'll say out of bounds. So it's incomplete. But prior to that, he had hit his first six passes to start the game, so on a nice little run to begin. It feels like this offense has carried its dress rehearsal into the game. 
you know, because you do practice it, you do go through it, and in this case, it is clicking exactly like they drew it up. On second down now, it's Cohen. And he gets this one just shy of the 40 to mark him down at the 39. A gain there of 12 yards and a first down for the Bears. Now this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack. And guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Here's Trubisky. And nowhere to fit that football in. It's knocked away and incomplete. Bradley Roby there defensively. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down? The offense or the defense? Let's face it. If you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. So line of scrimmage still a 39 on second and 10. Now they'll run it with Cohen. Nowhere to go that time. He maybe got a yard up to the 40. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. The Bears on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This is third and nine. From the shotgun is Trubisky. And Robinson with a big catch. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. 18 yards on that one, and Chicago has the first. I think it all came together there. In-breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 41. Out of the gun, Trubisky. And he completes it to Cohen. Give him six on the play, and it'll be a second down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Here's Trubisky to throw. He finds Robinson. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. Nine yards the pickup there, and it's a first down. Well, they obviously read man coverage there, partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what do you think. Mean by that? Broke yeah, down. he made him think he was going to run a different route. Probably thought he was going to take it upfield. Then it curls back inside for the completion. Trubisky now, 9 of 11 passing in this first half. He's got his guys at first and 10. Throwing once more, it's Trubisky. The connection made, it's Graham. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. The Bears on the move. They've got another first down. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. this from the eight to the five pickup of three that run didn't get very far and I think when you're looking at his dimensions he's a little bit on the smaller side he's counting on the big guys up front to escort him in and they couldn't create any kind of space for him could they yeah didn't get the push they needed and the ball smack dab on the five yard line here's second and goal now Trubisky to throw got his man and it's caught for a Chicago touchdown David Montgomery there to make the grab as the Bears push further out in front. 
They went empty backfield, all their weapons out wide, so there, were, there really was no secret here to what they were going to do. No secret, but they still had to execute it, and they still had to protect the guy throwing the ball because oftentimes when you empty the backfield, people bring pressure at you. They managed to hold in there and successfully complete the touchdown pass. Pinheiro now to add the extra point. It's good to make it 17-7. A 10-play drive that time, and it culminates in a touchdown for Chicago. Now after the touchdown, here's Pinheiro to kick it off. That's fielded in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, Let's and go, they'll start Let's at go. the 25. Now comes a Houston offense as they get set to take over here. And they had to wait a long time to get the football back. Probably not what you were hoping for when you got an offensive summit. Agreed. What you were looking for is the defense get the ball back pretty quickly, right? Hoping for a three and out. So that didn't happen. You can't yell at your D for that. They've got to take care of their own business and reestablish themselves now that they're back on the field. Watson will bring up the Texans here first and 10 at their 25-yard line. To throw is Watson. From the gun, he'll throw. They'll roll him out right. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. He's not going to get me. And no. Running from the gun, Johnson. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave them with a third and about three to go. The Texans on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. Here it's third and three. Back to throw. Watson. And Thomas has it. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. It'll go as a gain of six that time and it moves the chains as well. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Johnson. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they were hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Now a 10th carry for Johnson. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. It's a loss of four. Now third down. It's interesting going into this game, there was so much talk from both sides about who would control the line of scrimmage. I think we've seen who has it in this one so far. Well, they bottled him up. He's barely averaging over three yards a carry right now. The Texans on third down. They've been near perfect. Four for five at this point. This is third and ten. Out of the gun, Watson. Eluding the pressure right. He can run for it, and he will. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 38-yard line. 
When they watch film of this game and hand out the grade sheets, he's going to really like getting a double plus on this play. Why? He scrambles and picks up a first down. But what else does he do? Protects himself by sliding and avoiding the big hit. Double plus, big time play. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 38. On the ground, this is Johnson. And he'll snag about five yards down to the 32. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down. A very solid gain on that play. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. They'll try the air now with Watson. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Khalil Mack able to drop him that time for his second sack of the evening. Enough takes a start to have a good drive. Quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? No, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. Following the sack, it's now third and long for Watson and the Texans. Third and long, it's Watson. And he hits his target, it's Kenny Stills. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. That's running out of steam and it won't get there. He left it just short, no good, and this score will stay right where it is. A 55-yard attempt, normally you'd say well within his range. A little surprised he came up short. And he knew it immediately, didn't he? They are so calibrated, aren't they? They can tell the touch, the feel. When they put the foot to the ball, whether it's going to be good or not, he knew immediately he didn't have that one. Getting set to go again as we look at the back, heading on to the field again. We're in the second quarter. They've got the lead. The lead, though, not so much because of the ground game, because of their air attack, Charles. So what they're seeing so far is the possibility of things loosening up later in the ground game. Through the air first, maybe they have to start respecting that even more as the game goes on, and then there will be running lanes to find later. Yeah, try to get him more involved here on this drive, maybe. They'll start things on first with Torrey Cohen. Two yards on the carry there, it'll be second down. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. Throwing on second and eight, Trubisky. And his throw here is incomplete. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here. But that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open. And this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. The Bears on third down. They've been good, three for four thus far. This is third and eight. Now it's Trubisky. And this is going to be incomplete. You've always been very good about checking my math. Am I correct? That's the first time that it's been incomplete when they've thrown it to him? Yes, he had caught every other ball coming his way. So they feel like they've got something really good going there, and they're going to continue to go there until the defense makes an adjustment and takes it away. Well, they finally made an adjustment there. We'll see if they can build on that stop. He gets this away. It's a good one, drawing toward the sidelines. And this will be out of bounds, and they spot it at the 15-yard at the line. Not too bad. And we move to spotlighting Brandon Cooks. With them losing here in the second quarter and his limited productivity so far, you'd have to think they're going to try to look to him a little bit more, right? 
I would guess you would start to see maybe some quick screens, some hitches, anything to get the ball in his hands quickly and let him try and do some damage after the catch. Or maybe just flip some formations and keep him isolated where it's more of a one-on-one -on -one route and get the ball to him. I say just four verts, right? Hey, why not? Four <laughs> verts. One of the best routes in football. Hard to cover each guy all the way along the route. So far, just one catch for him. And he'll start the drive on the ground with Johnson. And he's going to lose yardage here back to the 14-yard line. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Strip the ball. Strip that ball. Adam, look, Adam, look. Now a play fake, and it's Watson. Rolling to his right. And they'll bring him down here right around the 17-yard line. They'll wind up with positive yardage. It's a gain of three, but now it's third down. So many times we talk about having good eye discipline when you're playing defense, making sure your eyes are in the proper place on a given play. Looks like that discipline came to the front there, didn't it? They were able to hold him for a short gain when he took off running. Throwing on third down. Watson underneath for Johnson. Give him seven on the play, and that'll bring up fourth down. A short gain that doesn't get him the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. On fourth down, here's Brian Anger now to kick this one away. Tariq Cohen is deep for the Bears. This will be fielded at the 17. A big kick there. We'll call it 56 yards on the punt. And the Bears take over. Mitchell Trubisky and the Bears set to begin their next drive. And he's been good. Two first-half touchdown passes, no interceptions so far. Does a lot for your confidence, does a great deal for your team, gives them a lead, and they're feeling really good about how they're playing. I think he expects to throw at least another one. I was going to say, now he wants the first half hat trick, doesn't he? Oh, without a doubt. Go ahead and fling him on the field, folks. He wants that type of celebration. Trubisky brings the Bears up first and 10 at their own 23. A quick throw out wide, caught by Robinson. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Okay, so now the question, how did he get that wide open? Well, we both know that he shouldn't because from the time they handed out scouting reports before this game, he was circled, starred, everything. Find him, cover him. But sometimes you can scheme a guy open. You put the receivers in a bunch. Maybe you move some motion. Maybe you put them on the backside of a formation, and all of a sudden you've got a better matchup. Every now and then, the offensive guys, they figure a way to get him open, even with everyone keeping eyes on him. And that's certainly a guy they want to keep trying to scheme open. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. Check, check, check so from the 36 now, first and 10. From the gun, it's Trubisky. Gets this to his running back, Tariq Cohen. And that play is blown up, losing yardage back at the 35. It'll be a loss of one, and it'll be second and 11. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. A reminder that when halftime rolls around, Jonathan Coachman will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. 
They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Allen Robinson, the intended receiver, and it's third down. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them, and not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they're going to have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. Escaping the pressure right. And he's got a first down and then some at midfield. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. Normally, we're talking about a quarterback duel where they're matching each other pass for pass. How about the footwork in this one? Both of these guys running the ball well. Yeah, they've mixed in the run game. You're exactly right. Now, both coaches might not like how much their quarterbacks <laughs> have taken off, but another example right there of just good mobility. Trubisky on first down. That is caught by Cohen. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Well, they try to swing it on left into the flat, complete, but really nice open field tackling. And they played that one like a great boxer. They were on their toes on that one. They weren't back on their heels reacting to the play. No, they saw it, came right for it, and made a nice tackle for lost yardage. The loss of three on that first down pass play. Now second and 13. Draw play here. Trubisky gives to Cohen. They'll get four on second down, but it leaves them with third and still nine to go. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, a guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Now play number seven of this drive, but it's a tough third and nine. Now the Bears going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Now play number seven of this drive, but it's a tough third and nine. Now Trubisky, and that is incomplete. The linebacker, Zach Cunningham, there defensively to make that play. Well, we've seen him catch a few passes out of the backfield in the first half, unable to connect on that one. Certainly seems like getting him the ball out of the passing game, though, is part of their game plan. It certainly is because he catches it well, creates a mismatch. You're going to cover him with a linebacker, a corner, a safety. They feel like he can win every battle. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. From the right hash, this from 53. And that one's not going to get there. Not enough juice, an ambitious effort, but it's well short. And this score will stay right where it is. NFL kickers nowadays, they make things look so easy because normally from this range, about two out of three. And this is not an easy kick. Yeah, 20 years ago, you get where he was in that 50 range, maybe a little over. And it's a big kick, but now we just, if they leave it short, you're like, whoa, what happened? And that's that's what we have here. Yeah, you're right. 20 years ago, we were saying run some more plays and get closer. Now we think they're definitely within range, and you're exactly right. When it comes up short, there has to be something that went wrong because they have plenty of leg. Good starting field position for the Houston Texans here as they come up first and 10 at their own 43. Watson now to throw. It's complete. Stills. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards.
The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Watson now hitting on 80% of his passes in the early going. 8 of 10. It's first down. A shotgun snap for Watson. He's got the first down here inside the 30. Touchdown, Houston. Kenny Stills, 45 yards. As they are now just an extra point away from making this a three-point game. I think everyone in the league talks about finishing, don't they? Doesn't matter whether it's a quarter, a half, a game, a series, whatever. But they're finishing the first half in fine style, putting that one in the end zone. They did, and they didn't leave much time on the clock either. Well done. Fairbairn now to add the extra point. And this is up and good to make it a 17-14 game. The long touchdown pass gets him six on a very, very tidy two-play drive that time. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. This is taken at the three. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Back out onto the field comes Allen Robinson. He's doing what he's capable of, having a solid game. Not, not the most amazing game. He's not over 100 yards, but a good game so far. And you just know that mentally... He feels like he's one catch away from turning it into a great game and starting on that road. And the defenders are well aware of that, too. They've got to figure out a way to not let that escalate. Keep him right in this zone here and call it a day because otherwise he can really decimate them. Better believe they are well aware of his playmaking ability. We got four. We got four. Now a fake on the give here as they try the run pass option. A Chicago first down there on a gain of 11. Yeah. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Trubisky will throw. He's got the first down and more past midfield. Now the Bears going to use the second of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with 23 seconds to go till halftime. Back-to-back hey. -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Now it's Trubisky. They'll find Miller. That's complete. And he's corralled at the 40, but not before picking up eight. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Now whistles and a timeout with three seconds left in the first half.
So three seconds here remain in the half. On is the field goal unit to see about getting three points. They'll spot it at the 47, so call it a 57-yard attempt. And this is good from 57 yards out. That was bombs away right there. So we have reached halftime in what's a six-point game at the break as we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, right, Brandon. Thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to this slimmed-down version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. Back and forth, we win in that first half. This has certainly been an entertaining one to watch thus far. So let's get right back out to it as we'll rejoin our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. And now out comes Houston. They're down here, but very much in this game. What's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. And they start the second half with Johnson. Only a couple there as he'll be brought down about the 28. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. They go to Johnson again, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to free up their linebacker to get into the backfield and spill the play. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. This is caught. It's Cooks. That's a first down with a cherry on top. 31 yards. It's your first drive of the second half. You're down on the scoreboard. Maybe just say to yourself, let's take a shot. See if we can shake them up. And boy, they hit that one. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. Now Johnson. Danny Trevathan there to bring him down. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. The busy night continues for Johnson. And oh, he's going to be brought down by the face mask. Here come the flags. This is going to get him a first down. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it is going to be 15 yards. My 
So the face mask, quite a blessing there as they'll start out of harm's way with a first and 10. Following the penalty, it's Johnson. They get him to the ground right on the cusp of the red zone after a pickup of five or six. And when you get good yardage like that on first down, it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense. But I love the way he's finishing those runs. At the end of things, he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. They'll run it with Johnson. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. The tally there, minus two yards, brings up third down. The short field shrinks even more with the type of bodies they brought in on that play. Those extra tight ends, they weren't able to secure their blocks, and that one ended up going backwards. The Bears bring out an extra defender in the secondary now for third down. From the gun, here's Watson. He gets it to Cooks. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 12-yard line. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender, and that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. They were searching for the tight end, Darren Fells. And it's second down. Trying to get their tight end involved finally. That's the first time that they've looked his way. He's kind of been a forgotten man in this offensive scheme. Yeah, it didn't look his way at all in the first half. And I'll bet you the offense coordinator made a note at the half and said, let's get him involved because he could be a big-time playmaker for us. Throwing again on second and 10, Watson. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. And now offensively, it's third and ten. And I'm just thinking to myself, actors always say, what's my motivation before a big scene? Right now, the play caller's thinking, what have I done before that's worked well that I can go to right now? Yeah, because they were pretty successful in the first half scoring points. Haven't done anything so far here in the second half. To throw is Watson. Open man, the tight end fouls. And he's going to come up well shy of the first here as the tackle's made right around the 12. Good defense holds him to only a yard, and it'll be fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. The kick by Fairbairn is good. And that cuts the lead down to just three, 20 to 17. So a decent drive there to start the third quarter. They only salvaged three out of it, but they inch a bit closer. Yeah, but still lots of time to go in this one. That's why you hear that clapping on the sidelines, <laughs> right? Hey, got some points. As you said, inching their way back in. Time left to go out and get that victory. Fairbairn now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. So here are the Bears now as they get set for their first possession of the second half. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. They begin the drive on the ground with Cohen. 
And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. We know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. They run. This is Cohen. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big-bodied guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. From the shotgun is Trubisky. And Robinson with a big catch. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk at a 45. First down for the Bears, a gain of 15. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you go lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. On first down, Cohen pushing forward for three up to the 48. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Check, 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 check. Here's Trubisky to throw. He completes this into the hands of Miller. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 28. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory as they've got it to the 28-yard line. Now Cohen. Menardrick McKinney there to make the stop. That didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just darted in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Hey, we've got tight left. Watch tight end. Watch tight end. Now Trubisky to throw. Got a man. It's Patterson complete. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. A good pick up there, a 22. They come out here in the eye. They go play action here on first down. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Demetrius Harris, the intended target, but it'll be second and goal. Down this close to the goal line, first down. Surprised that wasn't a run? I am, and you know I'm old school. I want to run the ball on first down in this situation because second down, that gives me that option of running play action and maybe throwing it. They'll go again from the three here on second and goal. They'll run for it with Tariq Cohen. They're able to get a couple here but won't get across the plane as they stop him right around the one. J.J. Watt makes another tackle there, and, and it's for a minimal gain. And let's face it, if that's all you're going to get running the ball, you're not going to have much success against him and his team. Or, yeah, you better find a way to go around J.J. Watt, which isn't easy to do. It's really not, because you've got to try everything. Can you go around him? Can you go by him? Can you influence him to get him out of position so maybe you can wall him off? He's a really sharp, intelligent player, as well as a physical specimen. A three-yard loss. Fourth down now. We've become so accustomed to it, you, you sort of take it for granted. You really do, but he is so good that every team in his division 
every year is trying to make sure they draft people charged with trying to block J.J. Watt. So far, hasn't been too successful. Now for the field goal try, here's Eddie Pinheiro. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. The kick by Pinheiro is good. And that will double their lead as it's up to six. So three field goals that he's hit now. This last one helps him stretch out the lead. He's been solid, hasn't he? And he lives up to the adage that every offensive coach has ever said to us. We want to end every possession with a kick, right? For them, it's either extra point, field goal, or at worst, a punt. In this case, it's been threes. After the field goal, on to kick it away is Pinheiro. This is taken at the three. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. Set to take over again to Sean Watson and this Texans offense. And you think he personally is evaluating his game so far? He was pretty good in the first half, been good so far here in the third quarter. He's got to like it, right? Not looking for the dramatics here. Not trying to set the world on fire in terms of stats. It's almost like you're driving. Hands at 10 and 2, <laughs> alert for anything out there, watching for trouble on the road, and making sure you get the team home. The bus driver. See if we can drive the bus here again on this drive. Watson. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Eddie Goldman with a sack. No doubt that's a very good play defensively right there because you've always got to be aware that he can take off and make a big play with his legs. How about the way they were able to contain him? That also tells me the coverage was excellent downfield. the sack they'll try to change their fortune here on second and 13. back to throw watson and that gonna be incomplete a lot of contact no call and it's third down and charles gotta like what this defense has been able to do these last couple of plays yeah they get the sack on first down then they force the incomplete pass now they're just a play away from getting the football right back but it's a big play they've got to hold up an incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Now Watson, he sets to fire deep, and that's caught inside the 30. And they do finally get him, but he takes it to the 25. I know we love our jobs, and pretty much any play we see, we're pretty, you know, excited about. But big plays, let's face it, that's what we absolutely live for. How about that one? That was great. And what our camera missed was the fist pump from the sideline after that catch. They're fired out. That's a big game. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 25-yard line. They'll hand it off now. Johnson. And they take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. A good response by the defense, sending them backwards after that huge game last play. Make it now three tackles for a loss in this game, one for each quarter. And for a guy who played defense in college, I can just tell you that he's feeling very satisfied right now by what he's doing, but he's elated because he knows what he's doing is helping his team win the game right now, making some big-time plays, getting into the offense's backfield and spilling everything. Here's a 20th carry for Johnson. It'll be a five-yard pickup there. So from second and 13, they're back to a more manageable third and eight. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. Throwing on third down, Watson. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. The sack there by Roquan Smith. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. 
this offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. So on fourth down, Texan kicker Kaimi Fairbairn comes on. This from 44 yards out, left hash. The kick by Fairbairn is good. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. So that's a seven-play drive that ultimately stalls out there at the end. Now, things were a little leaky in the beginning on that drive, weren't they? But how about the front seven? As they got closer to their goal line, things stiffened a little bit, forced the field goal. Fairbairn now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. This will be taken in at the one. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Yeah. Trubisky brings the Bears up first and 10, just shy of the 30. To Montgomery to begin the drive. A solid run on first down, gain of seven, leaves him with a second and three. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball, but when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. They'll run on second down with Cohen. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. On first down, they go right back to Cohen. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Now they'll throw it with Trubisky. And he finds his tight end, Graham. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 32-yard line. Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fella runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. Trubisky now, five straight completions here in this second half, first and 10. Off the play fake, here's Trubisky. Stepping up, he'll try and run. He'll get the first down and more inside the 20. And he's all the way down to the 13-yard line. The coverage may be too good that time as he breaks away for 19 with his legs and a first down. Man, defensively, that hurts. They got him out of his rhythm. They had him hemmed in, but somehow he was able to tuck it away and get away for a gain. Under a minute to go in this third quarter as they come up first and ten. From the red zone now, here's Trubisky on first down. He'll buy some time right. He's going to take off with it. Give him a couple on the scramble. It's second down. 
looked at me like they adopted what my kindergarten teacher always said. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. And finally, able to hold him in check, he'd been carving him up running the ball. That's the first time I think I've seen where the coverage was good downfield and they accounted for him and stopped him for a short pickup. Yeah, I don't think it was a big adjustment, but much more emphasis on making sure they knew where he was when he decided to take off and go. They'll wind up with positive yardage. It's a gain of three, but now it's third down. And that's going to do it. Clock hits zeros. They're not going to get another playoff. Time has run out on this third quarter. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. The Bears on third down, five out of nine thus far. This will be third and five. Out of the gun, Trubisky. And that's going to be knocked away in the end zone. It's incomplete. So decision time now, because a field goal keeps it a one-score game. What are you thinking? Well, I'm looking at the down and distance, and that's where the issue comes in. It's not short enough that it's a no-brainer and you go for it. You have to analyze this one. To me, you take the field goal, take the points. I don't think you want to risk coming away with nothing. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here from the right hash, and this one just a chippy. The kick by Pinheiro is good, and that will add three more to their lead. It pushes it up to six. So they get the three, but you wonder now, is that going to be enough? Excellent question, because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, it's a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown there, those would be big half-moon grins right now because they'd feel a whole lot better about their position. Uh, and a touchdown in the other direction, all of a sudden, they're down. After the field goal, on to kick it away is Pinheiro. This is fielded at the goal line. They'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. And the Texans set to come onto the field. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Watson will bring up the Texans here first and 10 at their own 24. Here's Watson. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Khalil Mack bringing the pressure yet again. That's his third sack here tonight. My man, it's been a rough night for that offensive line, and it's only getting rougher. Five sacks now that they've given up in this contest so far. It feels like the witching hour out here, doesn't it? Okay, stupid question. What's the witching, witching hour? Yeah, the witching hour. That's when everything goes haywire late at night. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. Now it's Watson. Stepping up, he's going to keep it. A nice job of eluding the pressure there, scrambling for 11. I thought they were going to sack him there like they did on first down. Great coverage, but he found a way to move with his legs. Yeah, his ability to take off. Not only did he get some yardage back, he got a little bit extra. Really helps him on third down. Makes it manageable now. Watson to throw on third down. He's got his tight end. It's Fells. 
And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping him from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. Here's Brian Anger now as he'll kick it away for the second time. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And it'll be Let's first go. and 10 Bears from deep in their own territory. Here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point? The kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> bad. I don't know about that. Bad. <laughs> Super tall. <laughs> And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets this football out shy of the 30 to the 29. 16 yards is the pickup there and a first down for Chicago. Uh, he's still rumbling, isn't he? Still looking fresh in this one despite the heavy workload. But you and I both know, well-conditioned, and he did tell us that he thrives on being at his peak late in ball games. This is Cohen. And I think this defense knew what was coming as he is smothered behind the line. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. I know they've got to be careful not to go to the well too often, but it's a fine line, isn't it? Because sometimes if you've got success, you want to just keep pounding away. But no success there. They rallied quickly on the defensive end. Second and 11 now. Trubisky. Bradley Roby there defensively. I think that's a big time play there because the slant route is really hard to cover because the timing is so quick. But able to see it, diagnose it, and get to the football, that's why he was able to bat it away. The Bears on third down. They've hit on half of them. Five for 10. This is third and 11. Play action. It's Trubisky. He's going to air one out. He's got a man complete. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. A great pick up there, 35 yards, and obviously the first down to go along with it. We always talk about the guy who paid off the play, don't we? The guy who caught it or ran it. But how about the elements that go into making a big play? This one in particular, able to scan the field. Pocket held up nicely. What a terrific job by the offensive line. The route well run, and the football right on the money. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 go, now for first and 10. No gain on the dump off. It's second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained. So they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Put up. 180. Let's go, D. It's going to be a long day, offense. It's going to be a long day. Yeah. On the draw, yeah. this is Cohen. And this one also slow and developing as he's maybe getting back here to the line of scrimmage, but not much more than that. And this is why the head coach gets paid the big bucks. Look at where they are in this situation, partner. Do you throw the ball here in a long-distance situation? Do you run it again and trust your defense and make sure you take care of the ball and punt it away? What kind of options do you have here, and what do you trust more on your team? Yeah, they may have just pushed him back into that throwing situation. We'll see. Completes it to Miller. And he'll be brought down at the 34, well short 
of the first down marker. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air, and sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. The kick by Pinheiro is good. And that will make this a nine-point lead. So yet another field goal to end a drive. That has been a very common theme. He's now hit five of them in this game. Yeah, Brandon, as an offense, you hate that you've had to call on your kicker so often. But you have to love the fact that time and time again, he's come through. After the field goal, on to kick it away is Pinheiro. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. The Texans offense now, they get set to head back onto the field. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, realize it hasn't worked <laughs> Go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Now a first down throw. Watson complete. It's Johnson. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. That pass play wound up for negative yardage, so here's second and 11. Watson now to throw. And an alley to run. He'll wind up getting four there on his own, but it will leave him now with a third down situation. He certainly had plenty of success running the ball, and right now I'm getting the sense that he's looking to take off and run every time he steps back to throw it. But they did a nice job there collapsing on him and holding him to a short game. Here's Watson on third down. And that will be incomplete. Oh, yeah. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play. And the officials are instructed. If there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. Here's Brian Anger now, as he's on to punt for Houston. So a change of possession here on the punt, and the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Tariq Cohen and the rest of the offense heading back out there. He is knocking on the door for 100 yards in this ball game. And it's so important. It doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal. Just short of it, a little bit over. A little bit over feels better to everyone. Offensive line, running back, team totals. Just something magical about breaking that barrier. Now he's right there on the doorstep now. Trubisky brings the Bears up first and 10 at their own 18. From the gun, it's Trubisky. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. He was trying to find Anthony Miller there. And now it's second down. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? 
Great defense. And darn right. They did something to disrupt that timing. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Trubisky will throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Okay, I'm not quite sure how to judge that one. Maybe he didn't have enough legs underneath him. Mechanics might have been off. Maybe some fatigue. That one came up short. Yeah, fourth quarter. Maybe you do start to watch. Is the arm there? The leg's still there. This has been a tough game. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Now it's Trubisky. And that will be incomplete as well. Critical play in this football game because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. Has to be a little frustrating for them because they know that if they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock, really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. Here's Pat O'Donnell now, standing right on his own five-yard line. And that'll skip out of bounds inside the 20 at the 17-yard line. Now the Texans' offense, they head back out to do battle here. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not, He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, <laughs> all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Uh, poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But, so, hey, listen, if some guy, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. Now a play fake here on first down. Steps away. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Roquan Smith, his second sack of the night. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game, the way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. up after the sack on a second and 12. Here's Watson. And this is caught by Fells right side. And they'll bring him down here right around the 17-yard line. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. And partner, I think that was a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. On third down, Watson sliding out of the pocket. He may try and run for this. Give him eight yards that time on the scramble, and now fourth down. I like this effort there. He got it done on his own, but let's face it. He puts defenses in a really stressful spot when he takes off and runs because a lot of guys have coverage responsibilities. Good job of rallying, though, because I thought when he first took off, he might pick up the first down. Here we go with Johnson, and he is not going anywhere. They stop him for no gain. He needed two, but he doesn't come anywhere close. And the Bears are going to get the football back, and they're going to get it in great field position. So they really needed points here in a two-score game. Could not come away with anything there on fourth. And while we know they're a little bit discouraged here, they can't check out of this game. You and I have called a good number of games over the course of our career where we've seen these types of situations. Teams get the ball back, and that miracle does occur. So they can't let that dream go just yet. They have to get stout on defense here. Yeah, right now, really hoping for a turnover. Forty-one, I got it. 
First down, a run with Cohen. They get him to the ground right on the cusp of the red zone after a pickup of five or six. Well, that's a pretty good drive starter right there, and I don't know, partner, if you're even thinking about sitting on the ball right now. They may just want to run their regular offense. In plus territory, and, and as an offensive coordinator, you don't want your team to go into a shell, do you? No, you really don't, because as soon as you take your foot off the gas, it's real hard to put it back on and mash it, because once everyone's emotions come down, hard to start them up again. So I think he may want to keep them cranking high right here. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Trying to get it to Tariq Cohen out of the backfield. Third down here. From the shotgun is Trubisky. And it's intercepted at the goal line. Picked off by the corner, Bradley Roby. And he'll be stopped shy of the 15 at the 14-yard line on the return. Two-score game here in the fourth, and that pick, it kind of keeps the door ajar, doesn't it? It does, and you wonder about their strategy because with a two-score lead, you would think maybe you're just sitting on and trying to drain some clock. It's almost like they felt like, hey, we've got a good cushion. We can keep pressing it. It ended up costing them. And here comes the Texans now. And last time they were very fortunate, this offense. They went for it on four, turned it over in their own territory, but the other guys held up. <laughs> they didn't give up any points. So how about the guy with the number one headset on the sidelines, the head coach? <laughs> that was planned going into it, not necessarily to not get the first down or to, to have the defense have to hold up. But he up. trusted his defense. Trusted his defense very much, and I think that that's how he's going to play this game. Go for it. Be aggressive because I've got the wild bunch backing me up over here on my own side. Now we'll see what his offense can do. Oh, the ball is out. Watson lost it. And this is picked up by the Bears. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Brandon, I don't want to violate any of our broadcasting rules by declaring a game over before it's over. But that one... That puts them in real jeopardy there. Absolutely. It was a two-possession game. It is a two-possession game at this stage in the fourth. They needed points out of that drive. And obviously now, no chance at all to get those points that they so desperately needed. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And the interception thrown in the red zone last time. We'll see if they can rebound. I just have to think the last thing he said as they went back out there was, don't do that again. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I think that. I think that not only did he say that, but he also told him, let's put it in the end zone that it's supposed to be in, all right? The end zone we're trying to score. I know we're being a little bit facetious here, but the bottom line is take care of the football and everything else should flow from there. Quick lesson, never ask the play-by-play -play <laughs> guy a question. And that is caught. Touchdown, Bears. Three touchdown passes now for Mitchell Trubisky. And the Bears use the short field to their advantage as they cash in for six. There was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. And now they'll empty the backfield here as they elect to go for two. Now Trubisky. They'll roll him out right. And he will get into the end zone to bump the lead up to three scores. Now after the touchdown, here's Pinheiro to kick it off. This will be taken in at the one. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Out comes a Houston offense as they get set to take over here. And the turnover last time, that's sort of been symptomatic of their struggles here in this one. Big word. I like it, though, yeah. because you're exactly you right. You like that, don't you? All game long, 
They've struggled moving the ball, turning it over on the last possession. Is that word again, symptomatic? Yeah, yeah. I like that. Your analysis, symptomatic of the success of this broadcast. What I like is that you gave me the word, and I just kept using it. <laughs> so first and 10 now from the 30. From the gun, here's Watson. And an alley to run. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Now that was not a bad scramble there on first down. He didn't force it, nor did he throw it away. He was able to take off, and now he made it a very manageable second and short. This is it. Mike the 59. Mike the 59. I know he ain't got it. I ain't about it. To throw again on second down. Watson, he gets this one to Johnson. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A fresh set of downs on a gain of 13 there for the Texans. You cannot write these guys off just yet, not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance. Not with him. We've seen it too many times. Watson on first down. And Thomas has it. Give him a couple on the catch. It's second and eight. You got the big lead defensively. Willing to give him that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle him after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards go. on first down. Here we go. Nine to throw is Watson. Johnson's got it complete. Call it a gain of three. And just like that, it's third down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Watson. He's got a first down and more inside the 30. And he gets this one down to the 24. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 24-yard line. Watson in the offense going to come up first and 10. And he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. Again, it's Watson. And that'll be incomplete. We do have a penalty flag down, however. Let's see what that's about. A little too aggressive defensively, and the flag comes out. And no one trying to cover is going to like a call going against them, but you have to like the effort there. Went for the interception, just unable to get it, and the flag did come out. From the red zone now, Watson. That's caught. It's Thomas. And here he'll get it down to the seven. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pick up on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Facing a second and two after that last catch. Good for eight yards. Now a handoff. Johnson. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. He can muster only a yard there, and they'll be left with a third and very short. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. They stay on the ground. This time it's Johnson. Boy, no chance as he was met and dropped behind the line there. Losing two yards that time, and now it's fourth down. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's Texans football as we welcome you back. A field goal does you no good, so they're going to stay out there and go for it on fourth. 
Back to throw, Watson. Thomas has got it, complete. And he's able to pick up the first before he's brought down inside the five at the four. Felt compelled to go for it there on fourth down, trailing in the fourth quarter. They got it done. And there's always a lot of pressure on a fourth down call. Doesn't matter the distance. The stop to get it done, as you noted, and they did. Now they got to get to the line quickly. Now Watson. He finds his man, Johnson. No gain on the play there. It'll be second down. Pass complete, but no gain. No yards. Yeah. So you file that as unsuccessful. Yeah, you do, don't you? Except on the stats, throwing the ball. Get a completion. You get a catch. Yeah. But still, no, no yards. yardage. Okay. Line of scrimmage. Again, the four-yard line. Second and goal. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. It was Roquan Smith who got his big hand in there to knock it away. Another incompletion. You know, it's a wonder he's still moving around back there the number of times he's been sacked. Yeah, he's staying out there, isn't he? And you don't think about it much in a game like this, but he's showing incredible leadership. Still competing, still fighting, not taking himself out of a ball game that appears lost. Here's Watson. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Well, the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a skosh of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen, despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. And a field goal obviously means nothing here. They're going to go ahead and go for it on fourth down. Here we go on fourth. Watson, and got his man, it's caught. Touchdown, Houston. Brandon Cooks, there to make the grab. And the Texans cut into that lead. I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed, but if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively there, you're probably hoping for a one-to-five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right, and if you have that one-to-five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope. When they had to slog their way downfield, they got the touchdown, but it's almost like, ah. Yeah, yeah you know, it doesn't you got, feel right. Exactly. <laughs> Extra point by Fairbairn, up and good. And that will shave one more off this lead. So that one, a 13-play drive in total. And the result, a Houston touchdown. So two scores down, time definitely not an ally, but here comes the onside kick. And this is going to be recovered by the hand seam. And that should just about put a capper on this one. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. Here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field. And a few kneel downs should just about do it. Now, defensively, they do have all three timeouts, but very little reason to use them at this point. It's Cohen. Now a timeout called for by the defense as the clock shows 50 seconds to play here in quarter number four. The loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Oh, Trubisky going to throw. 
And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's the one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Now Trubisky going to give this to Montgomery, and he's going to be stopped here at the 43, and that is not near enough to pick up the first. Here's Pat O'Donnell now, as he's on to punt for Chicago. A big rush by the Texans, and they block it. And they'll end up with a football inside the 45 on their side of the field. Now, so much for pinning him really deep. Short punt could have pinned him inside the 10. Now great field position the other way. It's never good when you're punting the ball and your eyes see the ball go back behind you <laughs> no. in however form, whether it's over your head or to the side, never good. Now it becomes a race to get to the football so they don't pick it up and take it all the way. Watson and the Texans now down by 10, 35 seconds to go. It's a tall order, but they do begin with decent field position on first down. He's going to let it fly. And this is intercepted. And that should do it. Picked off by Tashawn Gibson. Well, it wasn't always pretty, but the interception there, that means that they should get out of here with a victory. Yeah, this is not a game that they're going to preserve for posterity on defense. But they did finish it off, didn't they? They did make the winning play to close things out. They'll take that one and head to the locker room. The Bears offense now gets set to head back onto the field. And this one all over but the shouting, you might say. Now there's one timeout remaining defensively, but probably no real need to use it here. Yeah, the only time they would use it, strictly for pride. The D can only stop it one more time as they take the knee. The Texans going to signal for their third and final timeout as they'll stop the clock with 24 seconds to go in the game. And Trubisky down to a knee, and that is all she wrote. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road, but there's something a little extra special about <laughs> doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? And the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. A lot of scoring. There's no doubt about that in this one, Charles. Points, they were not at a premium. They were pretty easy to come by. <laughs> they were, but it was fun, wasn't it? Because both teams finding ways to click. And you know people who love this game. They also love baseball games that are 14 to 11 with three or four home runs mixed in. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. The Bears get the win at home as we say so long from Soldier Field.